Confused about the cosmos? Can't tell a planet from a star? Then give us just five minutes and we'll show you what they are. Jack Horkheimer, Stargazer, tells you all about the night sky and the biggest show of all, the universe. And now, this week's episode. The biggest full moon in 18 years, plus Jupiter and Mercury have a super scoochie. Hey there, Stargazers. I'm Dean Regas from the Cincinnati Observatory, and I'll be your guest host this month on Stargazer. And I've got a load of astro goodies for you this time. Let's start with the badly misnamed Daylight Saving Time, returning on Sunday, March 13th. Then, pinkish Mercury pays a close visit to giant Jupiter on Monday and Tuesday, March 14th and 15th. Plus, we'll have the closest and biggest full moon in 18 years next week on Saturday, March 19th. And finally, the vernal equinox, the beginning of spring, will occur at 7.21 p.m. Eastern Time on Sunday, March 20th. Daylight saving time, which should really be called daylight shifting time, kicks in at 2 a.m. Sunday the 13th. Remember the old saw, spring forward, fall back? You reset your clock by an hour, but no daylight is actually saved. No extra daylight is actually created. It's just shifted from the morning to the evening. There's no cue in nature for doing this. It's just at the whim of Congress. But while you're out there enjoying that extra daylight at the end of your day, Look low in the west right after the sun sets, and as the sky gets darker, you'll see the closest evening planet pairing of 2011. Let me show you. Next week on Monday, March 14th, about 45 minutes after sunset, look low in the west and you should see two bright star-like lights not far above the horizon. The pink planet Mercury will be about two and a half degrees down and to the right of a much brighter Jupiter. The next night, Tuesday the 15th, same time, same location, Mercury will be even closer to Jupiter and a bit higher. Mercury will continue to climb higher each night for the next two weeks, while Jupiter will drop lower each night and will soon be gone from the evening skies. Now remember that even though Mercury and Jupiter appear to be very close together in the sky, they are really hundreds of millions of miles apart. Mercury will be much, much closer to you, a bit over 100 million miles away, while Jupiter will be almost five and a half times farther away at 548 million miles. Another way to think of it is that next Tuesday, the 15th, the sunlight reflecting from Mercury will take nine minutes to cross the solar system so you can see it, while the sunlight bouncing off Jupiter will take 49 minutes to get here. Now next Saturday the 19th, you'll be treated to the closest and biggest full moon of 2011. It's not only the closest full moon for this year, but it will be the closest and biggest full moon since March of 1993. Plus it will be the closest and biggest full moon you'll see for the next five years, until November of 2016. What exactly is meant by that term full moon? Most of the time, people say that a full moon is a big, round, fully illuminated moon, and the moon looks like this for several days each month. Well, we're a bit more finicky with the definition of that term, full moon. In astronomy, full moon means that the moon's apparent geocentric ecliptic longitude is 180 degrees more than the sun's apparent geocentric ecliptic longitude. Whew, quite a mouthful, huh? Well, simply put, this means that the moon is on the other side of the sky from the sun as seen from Earth. This definition allows us to determine the exact time for the full moon. One minute before, and it's not quite full. One minute after, and it's all over until next month. But why is the moon a different size at different full moons? Well, the moon's path in its orbit around the Earth is not quite a circle. The moon averages about 240,000 miles from Earth, but can get as close as 221,441 miles and as far as 252,723 miles. That's a range of over 30,000 miles. So a full moon can be very close, such as the one next week, or it can be 30,000 miles farther away, like the farthest and smallest full moon for this year, which will be on October 11th. The last time we had a full moon closer than this was March 1993, and the next time will be in November 2016. So be sure to check out this extremely close full moon, and don't miss Jupiter and Mercury at their closest. And remember, keep looking up.